Hi, this is Tutoring Tim, your reading buddy. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how do we build your child's comprehension. And I don't want you checking comprehension. And it's completely different than what you grew up with, maybe what you're thinking of. And checking comprehension says, okay, Tommy, I'm going to ask you a question about the text. You tell me what I'm thinking. That's checking comprehension. So the child's reading with you or they're reading out loud, and you ask them a question about, well, gee, what color was uh, mercy? What do you think was happening in that, in that uh, story? What did Mercy do when he went to? Those are checking comprehension. It says, you read it, I'm going to check your comprehension. But what we need to do when we, as far as helping your child comprehend is build their comprehension. Well, how would we do that? I'm going to give you a, 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 a simple thing you can do. And three things I want you to, to, to focus on. One is the rule of three. Authors will notoriously use three things to describe something. Now that helps a child build comprehension. Point those out to the child. So uh, the, chi the, the author may say um, the town had old buildings, they were dingy, they were run down. One, two, three. They don't use more than three. Rule of three follows for uh, whether you're working with a picture book like such as this or you're working with moon over manifest, something of this nature. It doesn't matter. The rule of three works with adult, adult fiction, nonfiction, and you point those out to children, and you say, how did the author do that? What did the author do here? What three things did the author use to help us understand, and what, did the, uh, what picture did that help us develop in, in, when, when she used those three things? Rule of three. It's a great, great tool you can follow everywhere when you're reading books. So point those out to children. I put that in an instructional manual on our website as well. With rule of three. The other thing is what we call conjunction or connecting words. And one of them is the word, the three main ones are and, but, or, or. The main one you're going to see is, or the main two are and and but. But says, look, I'm going to ask, tell you something different than I just told you over here. Now, standardized tests do this all the time. And what they'll tend to do is ask a question about something that was written on the left side of but because they're trying to check to see if you really comprehended because your brain tends to hold on to what was on the right-hand side of but. And if you point that out to the children, your child, and say, look, how did the author let us know something was going to change? Right. So Katie was always smiled or was always smiling. Then the author would follow that up and say, but not when it was raining. So the, the, a standardized test might ask, was Katie always smiling? Uh, something of that nature, or, uh, and, 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 or, or they may ask a question about uh, what, whether she was smiling on rainy days or, or sunny days, something of that nature, but and and but help you as a reader then understand, and you want to point those out to children. They're called connecting words, and the you, you question you would ask is, uh, how, do you, how did the author let us know something was going to change? And your child should follow up and say, the author used the word but. On this side, the author told me this. But then she used the word but and says, hang on, I'm going to tell you something different than what I just told you. Or take the connecting word and. I'm going to tell you more. It's a, it, it says, look, continue with me, follow with me, and. Right? So those are things that help build your child's comprehension. You want to point those out to your child, help your child understand that. So when you ask a child not what did, the, uh, uh, what did Mercy do in this book, or what did the character do in this book? Start asking questions like, what did the author mean here? Uh, how did the author let us know something was going to change? It's called questioning the author. You can look that up on the internet. I've twisted it to a certain extent to, uh, uh, to apply to fiction books, and it works very well. But what we do with comprehension in, in our schools, and sometimes with parents, is we tend to check answer for answers instead of helping your child. Here's another thing I want you to do. When the child doesn't know, let's say your child kind of looks at you and says, I don't have a clue, you say, let me show you. So you never have to say no to your child and say, well, you didn't get that one right. You can just jump in and say, let me show you how I got my answer. Here's what I think. When the author did this, it really helped me comprehend because she used three things to help me understand what the town looked like. Let's you and I find the three things. That's building their comprehension. You never have to say no to your child. You can say, immediately jump in and say, 
let me help you understand how I understand. That is a complete different twist on what you and I may have grew, grew up with, and that is checking. So you remember sitting in your classroom and you were worried whether the teacher was going to ask you a question and you didn't know the answer. Now, you don't, you're not going to put your child in that same position. Build comprehension. Teach them how do we comprehend. Comprehension, uh, many children struggle with it, and the reason they don't enjoy reading is because they don't comprehend well, because they don't understand how the author writes. And finally, one more clue I want you to point out, and that is the author will use definitional clues. So the author will actually define it. One of the things that she did in Moon Over Manifest, she said, she said excuse me, that she said, look, the author wrote uh, the, the, the character in there said, we're using army forks. Then immediately she followed up and says, that means we're using our fingers. That's a definitional clue that says, I'm going to define for you what I just told you. Point those things out to children. Authors use them all the time. They, 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 they are, uh, and, and you want to point those out to children. That's building comprehension. So how did the author let us know something was going to change? What did the author do to help us understand? She actually defined it for us. You don't have to guess when you're comprehending. Comprehension doesn't have to be that hard. It can be a lot of fun. And the interaction in between you and your child can be a great joy rather than you getting frustrated. And trust me, as you model for them, they'll start saying, oh, I understand how mom and dad got that. Mom and dad showed me. So in, in the one thing that we learned about working with children and helping them understand is tell, show, practice. So tell them. Show them how you did it. And then give them practice as they continue to read out loud. Good luck.